So, I wanted to make a video on this uh, film camera that I recently acquired to kind of teach you around if you uh, get lucky enough to find one of these either at a flea market or if your grandpa maybe owned one and you find it somewhere and you want to get it up to speed and um, especially I want to kind of show you how to tweak the potentiometers that are inside such cameras so that you can use the um, exposure meter that works uh, in those in those cameras. So what is it? It's a Minolta uh, SRT 101. This one specifically there is an entire range of SRT cameras that were made uh, I think in the 60s or something like this. Uh, I originally bought this one because I wanted the lens that is on there. It's a 58 millimeter. Uh, where it's on the bottom, 58 millimeter 1.4. It's a Rockor uh, Minolta lens. This one is in pristine condition, so I, I kind of made a good deal on the <laughs> lens alone. But I kind of wanted to see how these types of cameras, you know, work. Uh, this is a fully mechanical camera, meaning that when you set a speed and ASA and you arm it, it works without battery. The battery that is in there works solely to power the uh, light meter that you find inside the prism in the viewfinder. So, what happens if you get a camera like this? First things first, you could check if there is a film inside, you know, may uh, you may find some old pictures, what you can do is try to rewind this and if it's kind of stuck you need to release the film by pressing this button here then you rewind the whole thing and then to open it you essentially just pop it like this and it reveals and then you can retrieve the, uh, the film that you may or may not have inside. So I wanted to show you the inside of this box because if you do not know in those cameras uh, you have what is called a light seal. Essentially you have foam in that tiny uh, in that tiny space here that usually breaks down, of it break, ah, breaks down over time and that you may need to change on yours. If you do this, there are countless videos on the internet uh, you can buy uh, foam for the light seal on Amazon for example. This is a really relatively cheap option that you can find but uh, again it's not something I want to show here because it's been done already and you have countless videos of people showing you how to do it. You can use light foam, you can use uh, some people use wool and glue and it seems to work well. I mean again I the part that I want to show you is not, it's not this but just to get you up to speed this is the type of thing you might want to do if you get one of those cameras is to check the light seal and potentially change them. Um, Again, one thing you can do is if you so to pop the lens, you need to push this thing down and then you unscrew essentially until it declicks. And you have so the mirror, you have the focusing screen that is at the top here. Uh, same thing, thing uh, if you change the light foam inside of your casing, you may need to change the foam that is here and you can use light foam as well. It is essentially a, a dampening mechanism when the mirror lifts uh, during the actual taking of an image. It bumps into this thing and this so makes it that the mirror doesn't break uh, when it's in use, essentially. So to put the lens back you just align the red on the red, you click it into place and it's fine, it works. So, uh, like I said, on those cameras specifically you have two light sensor uh, to take the top off. Again, you have videos online on how to do this. Essentially you need to remove these two screws. There's a screw yep, here. Uh, quite a tricky one but there is a screw under the red cap here this is kind of kind of mean on their part but you need to remove this tiny red uh, insert and there's a flat head screw um, below this thing you need to unscrew this you need to unscrew that whilst being at a B setting on uh, 6400 so to change the ASA again oh, you lift this thing and you can 
you can change. You need to be at B6400 and so that the realignment process of this wheel when you put it back together is uh, significantly easier. But again, you have videos of people tearing this thing down. Uh, and essentially what it looks like inside is that you have these two light sensors that are on what's called the prism uh, which is essentially what reflects the light from the mirror to your eye so that you can do focusing, uh, whatever you need to do whilst looking through a camera. So you have these two wires that are going down to a battery compartment that I will show you. Uh, so these two wires go down through the camera body to uh, the wiring system that is in the bottom of the camera. So. The issue is that back when those cameras were issued, um, the battery you, need to, you needed to use in those things were called uh, six, uh, were called PX six hundred and twenty-five batteries, and they used to be mercury batteries. So these are not made anymore. Now you can find replacement batteries that will fit in those cameras, but the issue is that it is a one point five volt battery. Back in the day, this used to be 1.35. Actually, if you read manuals uh, from these cameras, they tell you to use these batteries or rather to use uh, 1.35 batteries because otherwise the reading on the light meter is going to be it's going to be wrong. So uh, online, people tend to say you need to buy one of these MR9 converter, which is it's essentially just a piece of metal, so that you can fit a uh, R44 battery inside. So why R44 and not LR44 or PR44? Because these are the type of batteries. You also have SR45, SR44, but which are um, silver oxide batteries. So for example, what you may find very commonly in, uh, in your local supermarket are LR44 batteries. These are alkaline, it is 1.5 volts, it's actually slightly more than this. For example, this is, oh, if I switch back to the camera, this is a LR44 battery for an energizer. And if you, and if you measure the voltage on this thing, uh, if you measure the voltage, you actually get a little bit more than 1.5, you get you get, you get, yeah, 1.59, so almost 1.6 on this one. Now maybe this voltmeter is a little old and faulty as well, so so definitely 1.5 and above. So the issue is that if you use those batteries as is, or rather <coughs> if you use the MR9 adapter, which again, uh, it's essentially just a, a, a spacer made out of conductive metal so that you can use something else than a PX625 battery, you can fit a LR44 battery in the EMR9 uh, converter. Issue is that in this case you need to use <coughs> sorry, one of these. These are hearing aid batteries which are uh, zinc oxide based and the great thing about those is that the voltage is somewhere between 1.4 and 1.45 which makes the light meter uh, more accurate than if you were to use an alkaline battery. Again, not perfect because these are usually slightly more expensive because the way they're marketed. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> sorry. So not, not the greatest thing. What I want to show you is that you can bypass all of this uh, by and you can use LR44 1.5 volt battery inside these cameras without the need to uh, buy a converter and you know all of those things. So, and you can you could e theoretically even use um, PX625 modern day battery, but y these are quite uncommon. These you can find in pretty much any supermarket, and it it it, it does the job. So what you want to do is, you want to grab your camera, find the bottom cover, and the two screws that are on either side. So, you take the screw out, you take the screw out, you take care not to lose them. Uh, if I slightly put it back, 
and you pop it there we go and yes so you now see the inside of your camera now <coughs> if you remember back on the image that I showed you on the uh, web browser the wires that are coming down from the uh, light sensor actually arrive here and what you find here so the battery is in there it's uh, wired this way here what you want to look at is this potentiometer here this potentiometer uh, by default is somewhere in the middle and this was done back in the day to essentially calibrate the machine or this machine so that because uh, each light sensor device needed to be calibrated uh, to the battery it's going to be used because you have slight variation and so they used to calibrate those things using these potentiometers uh, so what you can do if you own one of these up, this is a uh, light sensor device you know an external one that you point to somewhere something for example the outside you align this moving needle to the yellow needle that moves with this and then you get the reading based on the ASA and what aperture you want the shutter speed that you need to use so if you own one of these or if you own another camera that uh, also have a sensor that you trust preferably something that's a bit mo more modern for example this is an EOS this is an EOS 550 camera from Canon that I've used a couple times. I trust it. It, it makes decent pictures. Um, the sensor in this thing is actually quite working. So what you can do is you can tweak the potentiometer here. For example, as I said, back in the when I opened it first, this used to be in the middle and I moved it to this position by trial and error what you can do is that uh, essentially when you turn so this is the battery uh, switch if you want so when you turn it on like this you just have to, to twist it when you turn it on uh, essentially what it does it makes a contact somewhere in here so that the light meter system uh, is turned on when you look for it so in the viewfinder you have a tiny needle that you need to follow and that you need to align uh, the ASA and the um, the, the aperture sec selection with uh, this is a bit uh, not clear because you don't have an image of the inside of the viewfinder but if you have this camera look through the viewfinder change the shutter speed change the ASA look what it does you'll understand essentially you want the two needles uh, inside a viewfinder to line up so that you know the exposure is correct and so by tweaking this potentiometer here you can uh, essentially uh, how do I say make for the fact that inside of this you have a 1.4 sorry 1.5 volt battery and you can do it by trial and error so you don't have to screw this thing back on because it's you don't you you should remove the screws so that you don't lose them but then when you just press it against like this it actually makes contacts it turns on the light meter and you can check it like this without having to put it back together so if you have for example a window a light something that the light source is actually uh, a bit diffused so that it's slightly more accurate you can use a light meter you can use another camera to for example you say oh what if I'm at ASA 400 aperture 5.6 uh, what kind of shutter speed do I need the light meter will tell you the other camera will tell you and then you can tweak the potentiometer here so that it matches you match the camera for example right now if I point my light meter outside at 400 ISO at 5.6 I need something that's between uh, 125 250 so not that precise <laughs> if we can line up for example here I have 5.6 that is lined up exactly at 250 at 400 ISO so what you can do is that you take those same settings you see it at the same place you align the objective 
uh, the, the, the lens, sorry, th with the same lighting conditions and you tweak this thing so that when it's at 5.6, 250, 400 ISOs, you get the two needles that line up once you make this contact again. And so this camera right here, I can show you the inside of the battery compartment, it's actually not even a PX625 battery, it's an LR44. So you can still use the adapter so that it fits very very snugly inside, but I found that by simply just putting the battery roughly in the middle and screwing it on, it works. Uh, it's a bit ghetto, but it doesn't move around that much. I've seen people use tape or O-rings on the battery so that it doesn't move around, but honestly, it it works. So if you just screw it in, the 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 tension on the the pad will make it s uh, sit into place, and so yeah, you can change the pot potentiometer here so that this camera works with 1.5 volt battery. Um, again, this is something that I've tried on my camera. If you are not sure about yours, maybe don't do it. I I, I try I tried thinking about what I could potentially damage by putting in 1.5 volt battery and just tweaking this potentiometer here. And uh, mechanically speaking, I cannot damage a single thing because this is a fully mechanical camera. So I could literally rip out the entire light meter section of the camera and it would still work. I mean mechanically it would still work. That'd be a shame, but it w it would work. So uh in this case again, if you think that this is going to fry my camera, please tell me why because I don't see how this is detrimental to me using this camera because again, I can use an outside light sensor. It sucks, but works. With this modification, I don't even need to, so it's pretty great. So tell me if it's something that you might want to use on your camera, and if uh, if you think that it's going to destroy people's cameras and that I need to take this video down, please, please, please tell me how, because I want to understand. And last bit of advice, if you are going to move that tiny, well, essentially, arm do it with something that for example these are plastic tweezers so that you re you pretty much don't risk scraping the 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 path here the resistive path use something like plastic tweezers or maybe um like a a q, a q tip or something don't use metal tweezers don't use the tip of a of a screwdriver because you might scratch that and you wouldn't want that so have a nice day.